Hello everyone, if you're here it's because you've acquired the Constance Blues pattern. By purchasing this pattern and downloading it from your area, you'll see it's available in A4 and A3 formats in case you want to print it at home or at a print store. You can also find it in a 150cm wide plotter format for those of you who have one. Anyways, once you've downloaded and printed the pattern, and the pages have been put together, you'll see that each size is traced in a different color. Choose your size and cut all the pattern pieces. This pattern already includes the seam allowances, so you'll find a PDF file with the seam allowance measures for every part of the pieces. Also, in each piece you'll see a box stating which pattern piece it is and how many times it has to be cut. Basically, all the information needed to pass the pieces onto fabric. You also have, on the patterns, other markings that will be useful to you, such as the grain line, notches and all that. In addition to those indications, you have this video, and that will be all you need for sewing the blouse. Let's get to it. The first piece you have to grab is the front one. You'll also see the neckline. You need to work with the right of the fabric facing you. The neckline has some notches and if you go down from them, you'll see some pattern markings marked as a cross. Those are some markings to place these other long pieces to make this polo opening on the center front. So take these two pieces, depending on the fabric you're using, you may need interfacing them or not. For this plain weave, there was no need to. The pieces will be folded in half and press marked, and then they'll have to be placed from the top notch down to the bottom marking. These pieces already include the seam ones, which is 1 cm. So the rectangular piece, the inner part without seam ones, should be on the notch. And on the bottom, it has about 2 cm for similar ones. So, hold it on the marking inside the similar ones. Hold both sides. And now, with the piece open, pass a stitching from the neckline knot straight down to the bottom marking. Notice I'm sewing it inside the seam ones. When reaching the bottom, stop on the marking 2 cm before the edge of the fabric. Cut the center of the body by the rectangles you've just sewn similar ones. I've marked with pins where the stitching ends 
For you to see, I'm stopping the cut a bit before reaching those pins. Now, to reach the end of the stitching, it has to be done from the center with some diagonal cuts. The cut should reach right to the end of the stitching, but don't cut the thread. Now you have to turn those pieces inwards. Turn one first and then overlap the other one on top of the first one. The inner side is not sewn yet. It will be done at the end. Leave it like this for now. But here, on the bottom, turn the blues upwards and you'll see the pressing line is marked. Pass a stitching right there to sew all three layers together. If the pig is poking out, cut it. The front is now ready, so take the back piece now. Place them right to right. My advice is to have already passed a basting to the back piece on the markings so you can later gather it. Anyways, place front and back right to right and pass a stitching by the sides. You can use a fringe seam or a serge stitching, whatever you like. Now that the bottom is in a circular piece, you can make a double hem and machine it. Grab the sleeve piece, which is quite large because it's a Wrangland one. So it will reach up to the neckline area. The pattern starts here on the back. This more straight area is the center back. Then it has the back neckline and the front area. Anyways, in the pattern you have all the parts marked for you not to get them wrong. Place it right to right by its sides and pass a stitching. Press it. And on the pattern you'll see a notch marking the opening 
you need to leave open on the sleeve bottom. On that opening, on both sides, you have to make a small double hem, as narrow as you can. If your fabric can be marked with the iron, it will be easier to first press it and then pass a stitching on the edge to sew it. So, by hand, use some thread to make a kind of basting so you can later gather all the sleeve bottom. This is the same thing I said to do on the back. The cuff is a lacing. If you could cut it in a single piece, so the end that's loose, and if you had to cut it in two pieces to save some fabric, sew the ends together so it makes a circular piece. Now you have to align the areas marked for the sleeve with the top and bottom notches. On those notches, you have to make a deeper notch as deep as the similar ones, which is one and a half centimeters. Mark those notches both on the top and bottom in both parts. This has to be done so a small hem can be done on the outer sides of the wrist. So now, with the machine, make a hem as narrow as possible. You have that one and a half centimeters Simalo wants to do it. Grab the lacing, the cuff, and place it right to right, aligning the wrist area and, on one of its sides, pass a stitching by similar ones. Turn it inside out and press it.
Now you have to add the sleeve to it. Take the sleeve. It has to be gathered, so, as the basting has already been passed, gather it as you like it for now. Align both ends of the sleeve, the openings, with the ends of the cuff. And you just have to adjust the gathering of the sleeve so its length matches the cuff. Notice that for now only one of the faces of the cuff is being seen and we're placing them right to right. Once you've held it, pass a stitching by the 1.5 cm wide seam allow ones. The allow ones can be pressed with the iron for it to be flatter. And then, on the other side of the cuff, turn it so it's easier to work with, you'll have to cover the seam like a sandwich. Push the seam all once inside, press it with the iron, place some pins or baste it so it's held in place. Make it to have all the seam allow ones well covered and pass a stitching over it to sew it all. For wearing the sleeve, what you can do is folding this on top so you have a double cuff and making a lacing around the wrist. This is the sleeve's center back. So grab both sleeves, place them right to right and pass a stitching on the center back. Now we have the sleeves and the body ready but separate. It's time to sew them together. You just have to watch carefully because it's a wrangling sleeve, so it will start here on the front corner. You have a letter in the pattern marking this corner where the sleeves will begin. And from there you just have to match the notches, passing through the back, the sides, the back once more, and the other side, until you reach the other corner on the other side. Place the pieces right to right, you can hold them with pins first. Remember that for the back to match the length of the sleeves, you have to gather it. But you have to gather the area marked on the pattern. You have to leave the whole gathering on the center back. You have the segment marked on the pattern. Now 
This is what the Wrangland sleeve will look like. If you want to, you can pass a net stitching on the sleeve side. Let's go to the back and notice how all the gathering is on the area from half back to the center. And we get back again to the front neckline. Let's now move to the collar. There are two pieces that have to be cut. Same as before, if you need interfacing your fabric, do so. But for this prototype, there's no need. Place the pieces right to right, pass a stitching on the top and leave it open on the collar base. Empty the corners and turn it inside out. Press all the edges thoroughly. Take the blues again and let's place the collar, aligning the center back of the collar with the center back of the blues. Align the shoulders too. And the front collar must be on a notch that's in the center of the placket. Then, fold the placket over itself, right to right, for the collar to be pocketed between both pieces. Align the center notches. You can overlock it before doing this. You can overlock all the placket pieces. It's important to overlocking them. You could also have done it right at the beginning, and it have been done by now. And on the other side, the same. Notice that here I have it all overlocked. Empty the corners. And when turned inside out, You'll see the collar ends here, right in the middle. Now it's time to close the placket pieces so they don't open. But first, on the collar, you can see I've left the collar base with an overlocking. You could also leave the edge raw, mainly so it doesn't thicken the seam, and you could take a strip of the fabric you're using to make a bias tape with which to bind the edge. To close this piece, Place the garment with its right facing you. Use some pins so the bottom doesn't move. And pass a stitching top to bottom or bottom to top, doesn't matter. Just make a stitching on top of or right next to the stitching you already have there, but on the side of the rectangular piece. This way, the stitching will be so close to the seam that it won't be noticeable from the outside. It's important to be careful and straight in this step for the stitching not to cross the seam line, because that wouldn't look nice.
Here you can see how at a quite close distance the stitching is barely visible. And now, because this opening is quite large, and you may not want the blouse to open so much, or maybe you want it to, that's up to you. Anyways, from the point where you want it to open, take some double thread and make some stitches there. Just a hand stitch, don't worry if it's visible, so it keeps the blouse closed from that point downwards. Then you just make the knot on the inside and that's it. With this the blouse is finished. And up to here this tutorial, if you liked it, see you again in future pattern videos.